Hey, this is John Young. Today we're going to look at XLR cables. These are traditionally known as microphone cables, audio cables. There's XLR that's used for audio, and there's XLR that is used for DMX. We're not going to really dig into the DMX. Uh, there's similarities, but we're not getting into that. We're just looking at some different audio cables. And the, uh, what I wanted to do is look at the quality. Of, I've got different levels of audio cables here, and some are new, some are a little bit older. And we're going to kind of dig into them just a little bit because not all audio cables are equivalent. So let's take a look at the, the four contestants we have in today's little demonstration. First off, one of the cables we're going to be looking at is from a company called Akool, A-Q-O-O-L. They make some actually really nice looking XLR cables. We're going to dig into these and take a look at those. We're going to be comparing that to, I've got a HOSA a unit here that I have had for probably about five years or so. Then I have this one. This is an old unit, and I believe they were being built by the uh, the HOSA folks at the time. But this is one of our first cables, XLR cables we bought, and we ended up damaging it a little bit here, but it still has functioned, and it's been, it has a lifetime warranty on it. Uh, so I wanted to just show you one of the old school ones. And then here's a cheap one I bought when I was desperate, and I needed to have a patch cord. So we're going to take these apart and take a look at all of these. Now the way most of them take apart is you just literally unscrew the back side of it and we're looking at the male end right now but there's three different pins here on the male end we have a pin one two and pin three and then of course we have kind of what would be the sleeve in that uh, in this connection right here and we have inside we have a if you can see that there's a red wire and a green and red is going to the pin two the green is going to pin three and then kind of the the sheath the the copper on the outside is going to pin one. If we look at the other end, let's see if that'll tell us, show us a little bit more. Yeah, you can kind of see that the the wire on the outside is going to the pin one, and you can you can't really see the colors on the other two very well. But you'll notice that in this case, you can see that that if this gets turned a little bit, we're going to have a short right there. This could be one of the reasons why this wire failed. Um, this is not done very well. You can also see I've got some stray copper pieces in there. That's going to add noise to it. So in this particular case, with this wire, there's way too much ability for it to, to short. A little bit of twisting, and I've got all three of them that are shorting out. So we're just going to set this one aside. Anyway, that's kind of our cheapest cheapest one. Now let's look at the... I'm going to pop this open. Let's look at the Akul and see how they did their pins and things inside. So we'll... Unscrew that and get a, a nice, a nice uh, looking end on this. Back this out. Slide that down a little bit, and then the end should pop off. And then we have our little cover there. Okay, we can see a huge difference right away. Is that they have, they have plastic covering. So they've got their two wires. The red is going to pin three. The blue is going to pin two. And then they have the outer the outer wire that's going to pin uh, pin one, but you'll notice that they actually put on a little a little kind of a, a, a heat shrink tube or what have you to help protect it. So no matter what I twist, the wires are not going to going to uh, have a problem. Let's check the other. We're not going to have that short. Let's take this apart. And let's see if they did the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to have so many pieces to put back together when we're done with this. Okay, so we're looking at the other side. And they did the same same thing here. Very nice. A nice solder to that. And they have those little uh, plastic coverings, uh, the wire. They left it on there all the way down. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to take that and set that one off to the side, gather it up. Now let's look at the oldest one. This is one that uh, came, we bought this probably in about 1989, somewhere in that ballpark. And of course you can still see that there's many similarities to from then to now. So the way they did theirs is they ended up tinning that wire and you can see that they ran and they left the insulation on all the way down. So you aren't gonna have, have uh, problems. And they did a really nice job with the solder. We've got a, uh, a very, a very good solder point and they didn't they weren't cheap on the solder they got it in there it's very very nice I'm not gonna bother to take the other end off because I'm guessing that when they do one end they're going to do the other now let's go to the HOSA one because I want to want to see the difference and then I want to uh, show you guys the uh, 
we're going to look at wire, uh, the diameter of the wire. So we're going to pop the Hosa one out and see how they did theirs. Okay, so we take a look at it, and the Hosa one is very much like the Akul. They have the, and again, this is in the Pro, the Pro Microphone cable. So we've got our three connectors, and the, the black that comes from around, they put a little sh heat shrink tube so they won't have issues. Let's take a look at the gauge of the wires. We can. So let's compare. And it's a little tough to compare because we don't have the insulation on this one like we do on that one. But it definitely feels like the Hosa wire in this case is a little bit a little bit thicker, uh, a little little bit uh, more gauge. There's, I should say the number would actually be lower, but I mean there's there's a, it's a thicker gauge of wire in the Hosa. If we compare the Hosa and the Akul, there might be a slight difference, but boy, you're you're really you're really similar between these two. This is the Akul and uh, and and such that with that one. And then we get to the old one, and yeah, you can definitely see that there is a gauge difference. So my old microphone cable here that I started out with an 89 compared to the new, we're talking two completely different gauge wires here. So of the two, if we had to run something with a little bit more of a signal, that the Hosa would be a better option for us than the old uh, my old one right here. But both of them are going to be a pretty decent a decent connection because they have things uh, where they have the so you're not going to have that short circuiting out. I would like to see on this one you know obviously a cover like they've done on this because if for some reason this gets pushed in and twisted you could have problems. But it's all kind of locked in and put together so you don't have a, a ton of issues with that. We'll put links in the description below so you can go check this out because the cool ones are a newer one and I really wanted to find out where they fit into this kind of um, this kind of kind of hierarchy, we'll call it. You know, they're not down at the really, really cheap chintzy ones. They've done a nice job with that. You're really, you're putting it up there close to the Hosa ones. And let's just tug a little bit. Yeah, they've got pretty, pretty good connections there. And once you put them back together, I think really um, the Akul could be a great option for a lot of DJs who are looking to get into some, some better built XLR cables and yet uh, not breaking not breaking the bank at some of the expensive HOSA cables. We'll put links in the description below so you can check out the price of HOSA and you can check out the price of the Akul and such all online. This is John Young. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.